Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nancy Friedland, and I'm the librarian for film studies and performing arts at Columbia University. Um, so I um, have worked with library material in very different ways than any of the other panelists here. I work primarily with published primary and secondary source content. Uh, so as a librarian, I work in our main uh, humanities research library. Um, so I'm responsible for acquiring printed uh, texts, books, journals, and um, increasingly database and electronic materials, either open access or available through published um, uh, publishers that are proprietary resources. So the twist, um, I, I, I'd actually like to take a point of view here about thinking about costume design research. And so I'm calling it Finding the Unexpected because I want to highlight very few but important resources. Um, and to think about, I work with undergraduate students who have undergraduate major in film. I work with MA students who are film studies. MFA students who are planning to become filmmakers who need to do research. And we do have, even though we don't have a PhD program in film studies, it's certainly such an interdisciplinary um, uh, subject area that I work a great deal with, with, with PhD level students doing research. So this, forgive the, the word cloud, but I couldn't resist because I wanted to just sort of put out there all of the different things that librarians today are engaged with. And primarily, it's thinking about all the disparate collections, um, especially for the primary source stuff. How do you direct students to, to get into this information? Um, multimedia, digital. Um, digital has had an amazing, amazing impact on, on research which should be no surprise to most of you in the room here today. So other things that I want to talk about are things like digital humanities, which I'm also very involved in, and this is sort of a very new area of scholarship, which I think is, is starting to engage also those interested in film studies. So um, the first is an image of Meryl Streep, and um, this is a still from her uh, in the film Kramer vs. Kramer. Um, I included this as the Finding the Unexpected. Um, this is an example of my own research that I, I was doing at the Herrick Library, and they had just acquired Ruth Morley's papers, and Ruth Morley is the um, costume designer for this film, as well as other films, in particular Tootsie. And so what I found fascinating, she was designing in the 70s, and in her archive, um, so for a film like this, um, I was finding folders of receipts on um, basically her shopping, which really shows, shows the transition of the work of the costume designer. So why I'm highlighting this on the Finding the Unexpected is that the couple that Meryl Streep is in the throes of divorce from her husband portrayed by Dustin Hoffman, Dustin Hoffman was wearing Gucci shoes, Gucci leather loafers. And this is the famous Burberry uh, raincoat. So as upper middle class um, professionals in New York City, her character would definitely be wearing a Burberry coat and not something where she could have gotten for less expensive. And also just the idea that film doesn't, doesn't lie. Um, here I want to switch another sort of aspect of film research. Um, to be thinking about, I'm, I'm fascinated by ads. And so to sort of throw in there digital and to think about technology, I think it's very important that most of us today, or what I work with students, see that it's just you sit down at a computer, you throw in your keywords, and you just wait for search results to come back. What I try and do when I'm working with students is to think about what you're looking at. How did that stuff get there? It's just vast amounts of digital content. So a very important aspect of this is called OCR, uh, which is optical character recognition. That's the technology that's scanning, whether it's from microfilm or text, that makes this readable and searchable. So there are products like ProQuest Historical Newspapers. ProQuest is a major publisher of this content. But they've done OCR in this that you can search display ads. Finding the unexpected, amazing stuff when you start looking at for designers, um, intersections of fashion and costume and so on. So this is just a typical of what a page looks like marked up. Amazing how much OCR can actually, good OCR can actually sort of look at some of this strange fonts and text. Um, another plug for ProQuest historical newspapers, or historical newspapers in general, Chronicling America from the Library of Congress is a fabulous digital initiative of digitizing. Um, I have found that newspapers have amazing content, um, unexpected little stories about designers, little stories <coughs> about the film industry, about the making of films, and so on. Um, this is an uh, image from American Vogue. Um, unfortunately, it's another ProQuest product, um, but basically American Vogue has been digitized 
um, all the way back retrospectively. This is a complete archive of American Vogue, full text searchable, um, so another amazing resource. Unfortunately, the proprietary resources, you need to be affiliated with an institution that has license to it, so that's sort of the downside. But there is, it, it is available. Um, here I put, sorry, it really pixelated, but um, another finding the unexpected is two reasons for this slide. Uh, one is um, to talk about digital images, which are essential to costume design research. So to think about, yeah, we all use Google Images. Google Images is a vast archive, uh, sort of an archive of images, but basically what it's doing is indexing images from web pages. Um, so to think about what you're, how you're finding the content. Um, generally, they're probably protected by copyright, uh, but for creating your own personal libraries of images for reference, outstanding resource. Um, the other reason I put this up here is um, in the context of thinking about the actual costume itself. So in Helen Rose, who's the costume designer for this film, um, in her, her published autobiography, she talks a great deal about how the costume, Elizabeth Taylor did not like the original costume. Um, so basically it was one of these 24 hours, go to the wardrobe department and come up with something, and came up with this amazing dress, um, which allowed her to move differently, very different from the very tight-fitting skirt she was wearing at the beginning of the film. And also, just to emphasize other areas of research, Helen Rose then did have retail um, sales, where this became the cat dress. Um, so other you know, women could just buy this dress on the market and feel as gorgeous as Elizabeth Taylor did when she wore it for her cat on the roof. And then the last thing, my last slide, is finding the unexpected um, YouTube, which I consider one of the wonders of the world. Um, I, I discovered this fabulous video of Edith Head. Uh, talking about designing for Audrey Hepburn. Um, it's a short little, sort of like a documentary. Um, whether it'll be there tomorrow is another question. Um, but um, she talks about just how doing, having Hepburn do a screen test, see how she was going to move, see if she's going to start to get the character. Um, really take a look at this, it's invaluable. Um, and then there's the, um, we may be able to watch it later if we have time, um, but then the beautiful Audrey Hepburn doing her test. Um, so, and this is of course for a moment. So thank you.